Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achono and welcome to episode 12 of Network Chat Programming. So today we're going to more or less talk about receiving data, okay? Not sending, receiving data. Now, the way that uh, the way that this works is, um, is uh, see the thing is, I-, I feel like I should do an in-depth episode that really explains things like ports and everything too, because I know that a lot of you guys aren't networking pros, um, and it does certainly help to know uh, you know, what a port is, what an address is, how, um, you know, what sockets are and how that stuff interacts. But, um, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of skip over a lot of this stuff. I will, uh, explain it roughly, but, um, again, I, I may make a, in fact, I'm pretty sure I will make basically just one-off episodes that cover all these concepts, such as, uh, ports, for example, or sockets and how they all interact. But basically what happens is, um, uh, this datagram socket, <clears throat> that this datagram socket that we've created, that's responsible for um, managing, I guess, a connection to the network. I talked about this last episode, but you can see over here in the constructor, we've left it blank, and that's absolutely fine, by the way. Um, what this will do is, um, if we are, if we actually mouse over, we'll see the nice Java doc here. It will say it, it tells us that it constructs a datagram socket and binds it to any available port on the local host machine. Now, the reason I've left it as that is because. Um, Occasionally, what will happen is, uh, well, well, essentially, what will happen is um, ports might not be available. So, in other words, on on your computer, you know, the port twenty five thousand five hundred and sixty might uh, might not be available, but it will be on mine because you might be running running an application or you've written your own application that uses that port. So, it's advisable uh, to not do that. But then again, um, you know, we are uh, we are if if we go back to this login uh, dot Java and we actually take a look at what it looks like uh, in the GUI side. Um, I probably should just open the application. It would have been faster than this uh, <laughs> passing thing. Um, sorry, my Mac isn't very fast. It's a MacBook Pro from 2010, so give it a break. Um, okay, so um, we've got this port, right? And that's there for a reason, right? I'm surprised actually no one pointed this out. So what what we do is when we actually do hit the login button, what we do is we, we grab the port here and we pass it on uh, to the login uh, method here, which in turn actually launches a new client with port as a parameter. We're not doing anything with that parameter at the moment. We're passing it into this uh, connect um, thing over here, but we're not actually using it here. So let's just put it into the parameter here. And what this will do is this will actually construct us a datagram socket based on that port. So instead of being any available port, it's gonna be that specific port, okay? And that helps us a lot. So now let's talk about how receiving works, okay? Because that's, uh, um, to say the least, that's um, not the easiest thing to um, to talk about. But uh, I think it's I think sending is actually actually uh, a lot easier than receiving, to be honest. But um, regardless, we're going to do receiving first. So uh, we'll make it uh, we'll make it private because we don't need to make it public. Uh, private string receive. Whoops. Okay, and it's not going to take any parameters, but it is going to return a string, and the string would, will be the thing that we receive. So, I'm doing receiving first and not sending. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because um, sending uh, sending is a bit more involved, as in we, we actually handle sending. We we more or less, we, we, with sending, we handle sending in, the, in, in its entirety in that actual method. Whereas receive, we kind of do half the stuff in the method and half the stuff when we call the method. So that'll make sense to you eventually. But um, for now, we need a way to receive something. How does that work? Well, first of all, I did mention packets, didn't I? Packets are essentially just groups of bytes. They're groups of data. Now, to receive um, to receive this data, this packet, in uh, in uh, y- using the datagram socket here, we actually need to make an object called a datagram packet, okay? So a datagram packet, uh, we'll, we'll just call it packet, oops. Datagram packet packet equals new datagram packet. And then it'll, it'll take two parameters for us. It'll, uh, it will only take, um, okay, so it has to take an array of bytes, okay? So in other words, when we're receiving a packet of data, we're receiving an array of bytes, okay? Um, so, you know, in, in Java and in other programming languages, there are, there are, there's a vast amount of uh, methods that actually do things like strings into byte conversions. So in other words, if we want to send, send the message hello, 
We don't have to know, you know, the, the numerical value of that. We can just simply use this string dot two byte or whatever it's called, two byte array or two bytes, I think it is, um, to actually convert that string into bytes. But since we're receiving, we'll just make an array of bytes here. So byte data equals new byte and we'll set it, uh, we'll make 1024 of them, okay? We'll make uh, 1024, that's two to the power of 10. Um, bytes, okay? So that, that should be enough, okay? You, you, you could make this bigger, but the thing that you would argue as well is that you really don't want to be sending packets that are more than this size. Um, I do realize that Java will probably split them up for you, but still, you don't want to keep track, you don't want to keep track of more than that many bytes, um, which is essentially a kilobyte of data here, um, you know, as you, as you send it. So, uh, okay, so now that we've made this, we can pass in data as a parameter, and we also need to specify a length. Okay, so in other words, this is kind of like the um, the range of the of the bytes that we actually want to send. We want to send all of them, right? So, oh, receive, sorry. We want to receive uh, the entire, um, we basically want to fill the entire array with data here. So, we'll just type in data.length. Okay, cool. So, let's import this. If we just hover our mouse over here, Eclipse will do that for us. So, it's located in java.net, dot datagram packet. And, uh, and there we go. No errors. Awesome. So, now that we've got that, we actually need to receive this um, data somehow, okay? This isn't receiving data. What this has done is it's created a packet. This packet is currently empty. We need to fill it with data. We can do that by calling socket, which is our datagram socket, which remember is our actual connection to the network, socket.receive, and then we actually need to dump the data somewhere. So we put it into our packet, okay? Awesome. So, assuming that this does actually receive something, we get a packet of data away from this. So we need to try and catch this because um, it does throw an IO, an, an IO exception as uh, as you would imagine because it is to do with input output. Um, let's support that. Hang on a minute. Yeah, cool. So we'll, uh, well, I guess we'll be nice and put the stack trace. <laughs> okay, cool. So now that we've done that, um, We've essentially got this packet of data now, but what, what we kind of want to put it into and is a string format, right? Because we're returning a string. So we'll make a brand new string here and we'll call it a message because, you know, we, we will be receiving messages as the entire point of this application and we'll make it equal to new string. Okay. Packet dot get data. And that's it. Okay. So it's just new string packet dot get data. Very, very simple. So what packet.getData will do is essentially, as you can see, return an array of bytes. So what we've done is we've created an array of bytes, okay? Think of it as we've just created a bunch of data, okay? One kilobyte of data here. We've, um, we've made a packet to store that data, okay? We've, we've actually, we've listened and we've received a packet from the network. And remember, this will actually hang the program. <clears throat> this is the other important thing. This socket.receive will sit there until it receives something, okay? Which is why we're going to talk about threads in the next um, episode. But this will actually, this receive call right here, this will actually freeze our application, okay? Because what it's going to do is it's essentially a, what is, uh, what's in, I'm not sure if I can show you this because I don't think, I don't have the source attached here. But um, essentially what socket.receive uh, is, is it's like a wild true loop almost. It's not really while well true, but it's a while loop that keeps going until it actually gets some data from the network onto this specific port right, that, that we've bound here when we've created this datagram socket, which is right over um, here. Actually, you know what? Let's put receive. Let's uh, let's put receive below the um, the open connection method here. Okay, so we've created this datagram socket on this port, and this receive method will actually just It'll just wait for data on that port. If the data never comes, it's just until we close the application, it's never going to stop waiting. Um, and then once it does receive something, okay, once it does receive data, it's going to pop it into this packet, okay? And then we can use packet.getData to get that original array that is now filled with bytes. And what we're doing here is we're creating a new string out of it. So we're essentially converting these bytes into a string. And then finally, we'll return the string. So we'll return message, okay? Awesome. So that is the receive method, okay? It's a bit, um, maybe a bit complicated here, but uh, 
I think I think it's probably a bit more complicated um, than the send method because send is easy, right? All you do is you make it, you make a, uh, you essentially just make a, um, you get you get your data that you want to send and then you just send it uh, to an to an address and to a port and it's really easy. But here, there's this whole aspect of how socket.receive works. So if we were to do something like put receive into, um, I don't know, into open connection or something, we'll just put receive somewhere. If if we were to do that it's actually going to essentially freeze our application, okay? Because remember, with concurrency, I really don't want to talk about this now. I should talk about this in the next episode. But what's going to happen is this socket.receive is going to take up the entire process because, of course, when we execute commands, you know, when, when the computer executes our code, it goes sequentially. When it gets to socket.receive, it says, okay, there's pretty much a while loop there. So I'm going to wait until I get data. Okay, and it's just going to sit there until it gets its data. It's not going to execute the rest of the program. So we'll be in trouble there. But luckily, threads will come to the rescue in the next episode when we implement the send method. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Network Chat Programming. If you did, please hit the like button. 200 likes, one video per day, 300 likes, two videos per day. Okay, so again, if you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.